This is your host of Lit Literature, JP, aka The Demon, and we're here discussing part two of episode 14 on Oathbringer, part one. Um, again, it's our second uh, episode with video, and we're getting better every time. Uh, if you want to join the discussion, please find us on social media at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Lit Literature One. Without further ado, cheers. We are live, back again from break for Oathbringer, episode one, part two. Ooh, again, part this two. is shout outs. We're doing lit literature again. Ooh. Ooh. Double headers always get interesting because we keep drinking, we don't stop. <laughs> That's probably not a good thing, but it's a reality. Um, oh, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Again, this is your host, JP, a.k.a. The Demon. Yeah. Straight from, it used to be Phoenix, but who knows where he is now, the captain. Staggering out of a bar with Vale this time. Ooh. <laughs> Damn you. <laughs> keep, keep your hands off of <laughs> <laughs> Oh, will do, man. I don't want to get stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, across from me, we've got uh, Ian the Dream. Here, representing from the high chair of Urithiru. Ooh. <laughs> You're in a high chair? Sure. <laughs> I'm a little child in this world. All of the lefties are like seven feet tall, man. They're supposed to be pretty tall. Yeah, Ben Hitman, thinking about visiting Andrew down where he is. Ah. <laughs> Hanging out with me, say hello. Mm. <laughs> I was going to say hello, nothing else. Got the cherry. How's it going? Brett, the director. All right. And that about does it. Again, you can find uh, these episodes and our episodes on likeit.net. N-L-Y-K-E-T. Almost said N. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, but also uh, Lit Literature on Facebook. Lit Literature on SoundCloud. Lit Literature 1 on Facebook. Lit Literature 1 on SoundCloud. Lit Literature 1 on Instagram. Lit Literature 1 on Twitter. I meant Lit Literature 1. <laughs> you, can see, you can see them all at likeit.net. Just look because for Lit Literature. Because we are... Number one. Number one. Number one. Number All right. Number one. All right. We were discussing part one of uh, Stormlight Archive, book three, Oathbringer by oh. Brandon Sanderson. And again, we are going to continue that discussion. And we're getting right back in it with Shalon. Ooh, mm. girl. Girl. Damn. No, we, we need to do it correctly. You so much. We need four of you. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Girl. <laughs> no mating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, uh, God. Pattern's Shalon, the best. Shalon, in my opinion, she was owning the second book, and now I think she's cracking. She's still owning. Still owning, but cracking. Cracking. She's cracking a little. Yeah, I don't know how you guys falling are apart, Mr. Man. Frodo here. He's cracking. I just feel... <laughs> crack is <laughs> whack. <laughs> I'm nervous, man. Don't do it, I don't kids. want... I don't... I don't want to see her, like, kind of regress because she's made such good strides, but she's having a lot of trouble with this "I murdered my mother" thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and she father. Be, well, and I father. think she handled that one a little better. I don't think so. I think her father is probably the one that's hurting her more. I don't know. Her mother wanted to kill her. <laughs> I know that's what's so it's strange that's about what it. We though. feel that's but what's I don't so know, weird man. about I don't it. Know. I think she feels bad about her dad because her dad took the blame for it, and then she ended up killing him. The one that she, she realizes on, that, and it, that's what ruined him, the, whole the whole family, family structure. Yeah. It like, drove him insane almost, mm-hmm. and it the ruined mother, the family. Yeah. But well, she keeps bringing well, up the mother whenever these because I think that's the memories come up. That's the beginning. That's the beginning when she did that. That made her father. That's when everything started going yeah. bad. I, I yeah. disagree. Drove his father, or her father, crazy. I, crazy. I disagree totally because here's what I think: it did drive the father crazy, but she blames the murder of her mother as the root of it all, the one that she wants to hide, because she feels guilty that that her father changed because he took the fall for that. Right. You know, mm-hmm. in social circles. So in my mind, it's she's. She knows that in the end, she had to kill her father because of how crazy that shit was getting. But the mother, she feels doing that. And that's why Pattern says, you know, you hate me because I killed your mother. Mm -hmm. But, all right, I see that. But I want to say that when she killed her mother, it was like an instant reaction almost. Like, there's no thinking about it, whatever. And then she had to live for the next 10 years. Thinking about it. Watching her father break down. Break down and become a tyrant. And like bear the burden of her sins. Yeah. I think that weighed 
really heavily on her. But, More than it lets on. But I think, I think way, it's the fact that she associates all of that with, with the, the starting of the, the mother. Yeah, it, yeah. Right. Yeah, it Obviously, the I think the father would be the bigger tragedy, but I think it's the starting with the mother that really is what plagues on her mind. I, get what I think she saying. associates yeah. it all. She, she also yeah, takes a lot of responsibility for her brothers, too, so that just yeah. kind of adds yeah. more more um, guilt and, re- and stress to mm. poor Shalon as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can see why, though. Yeah. Yeah. But I really want to know what would happen if the tooth came out and it turns out Shalon, like, we already know she killed her mother, mm-hmm. but if her brother is found out, they right. Oh, yeah. Because they, they, they think the dad. All they think, the family yeah. knows how, like, how has that acted for the past 10 years? Like, that's... That, right. And they don't really remember the good times, really, because it was so short. Yeah. Do we do we know that? We know that for sure that is the brothers also don't know the truth? They have no they, idea. They don't know. They don't know. Oh, they just know. quickly assume that it was the father. That like, was the father. Everybody did. Yeah. Because yeah. the father says he did. Right. Well, he doesn't ever say he did. He, he denied it. He, doesn't, but he, he denies never. it, but he doesn't like say he, he knows rat out who it was it this. So yeah. every by that implication, everyone just assumed it was him. But I think I would just be like so defeating, so heartbreaking to find out it was actually Shaolin who killed the mother and turned them in. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. interesting because her brothers are still around. We know that. And they're that coming. might be a ghost. At least some of them. Yeah. That they're might be a tool all against, them. Her, used well. against her. And uh, she's a radiant now. She. I mean, it's going to be interesting. And I will say that... Uh, so different yeah. from when she left. Dude, mm-hmm. I don't know about you guys, but Shalon... Dude, she's killing me with this, like, multiple personality thing. Yes. Yeah. Because, Total. Which, you, in my mind, and it's a good thing because, I mean, the story is good, but she's got to realize it. But she, I don't think she realizes yet that Veil is her, she's her, the Radiant's, Radiant's her. her. Like, it's okay. Yeah. You don't have to be what you used to be, and that's just you. It's not mm-hmm. pretending like, at a it's point. It's all it you is now, her, man. Yeah. 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 She's, she's got it all, but she has to, like, fracture it. Into she has it. to fracture it to function, because yeah. she, yeah. she thinks herself, Shalon, is, is weak. Is weak, killed her her mother, mother. her father, ruined her family. Yeah. So she has to yeah. disassociate from that. That's why it's the multiple, or disassociative yeah. disorder. Right? Yeah. When it becomes yeah, lady, an actual... you're confident, you're strong. You, like, people... They can be with me, but if not, it's fine. I'll lead them yeah. to tools. safety. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The tools. She, she. It's interesting. She can't. She's gonna. I think her journey through this book, I hope, is gonna be her finding a way to like accept these mm. different parts. Definitely. Of her. And or I'll tell you, what I think is gonna yeah. help her accept them. Yeah. I think her her eventual love for Kaladin. And Kaladin's uh, point of view. <laughs> we have a Brett bit on this, and I don't know. About I think that. her eventual. I think the love that will come for Kaladin. I think Kaladin will probably help her through that because he also had a hate of shard blades yeah. that he had to come to grips with. Dude, however, and different personalities. I got to admit, yeah. him. Pattern yeah, kind exactly. of likes Adolin, so yeah, that's okay. But I think this although I do think Shard and this Adolin book. are fantastic together. It'll <laughs> be like. Book five or six before it's. Uh, oh yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Be wow. the, it's gonna be the that last dark page of book Dean. ten. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He'll come into terms with the personalities, and it's yeah. gonna be long. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be interesting, man. We're gonna have to find out. Also, so, I hope there's more personalities he put things out. Oh well, yeah. yeah. I mean, right now she's got Shalon, quote Shalon, yeah. whatever that is, Radiant Veil. Vale. She loves those. I hope it'll be like some more spies and like. I don't know. I just moved. Yeah. Now we'll find out. Here's man. here's a here's another thing that I was kind of thinking of. Do you think eventually we, we might start getting hints of a herald that had multiple personalities? Hmm. Do you I mean, think it's, it's so do you funny how her a, powers a go so much powers. with her. Yeah. yeah. Do you think it's a symptom of her powers that she's transforming into, or do you think it's a, literally this thing that she can't mm. deal with? I I, I think it's. Her internal conflict, mm-hmm. less than her powers, because so. patterns so, kind yeah. of like, you know, Shalon, just hope it up. Yeah, you hate me. I love him. I know he's him. amazing. <laughs> yeah. he's my favorite. I friend. think his powers like help her actually split up. If she was a different radiant, it wouldn't. Yeah, the like disguises that. and everything. Yeah. yeah, it helps disguise her true feelings and even more able to factor her personality. Yeah. 
Her powers uh, help her internal structure. Enabled. Right. Mm-hmm. Enabled, Enabled, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So she's still quite savvy. Um, yes, You is. know, she's uh, helping Adolin uh, investigate with her abilities and showing again that she's an extremely um, effective investigator. Yeah. Uh, she helps Adolin negotiate, uh, or I got not really negotiate, but meet with Sadis' wife. Mm-hmm. Ile. Um, Ile. Um, bitch. She wow. tell us what you really think, Manny. She finds that funky, funky spren. Yeah, uh, which we'll get into when we get yeah. to the end of Shalon's conversation. But how about Shalon, who's never really been drunk, <laughs> finding out that she loves drinking? Yeah, <laughs> and probably some of the hardest liquor you could possibly get. Yeah, it sounds yeah. like she, which she drinking... likes because she is part horn eater. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> she was drinking well, straight up moonshine, yeah. and it's very convenient if you're a heavy drinker to be able to just instantly uh, vanquish all of your drunkenness through sucking in stormlight. Yeah. Oh. Yes. oh man! How oh, I need awesome to be sober. Be? Oh yeah! Uh, <laughs> I gotta drive home. Where's some? But I think some emeralds. Right, what are <laughs> More interesting things we find out about the culture of the Lethe is. That the Lethe are nobles, like, they drink this, like, wine almost. Yeah. And it's, like, oh, the purple is the most powerful wine. hmm And then she had no idea that, like, she's drinking wine, and then all of a sudden there's these distilled spirits, like, straight liquor. Yeah. That all the other people drink. The horn eaters. Well, horn eaters and the other, they had more Even stuff. the regular Lethe. Yeah. And they're like, oh, what are you, some kind of noble, like, rich <laughs> woman wanting the... Call, they just like call dye in it yeah. and like dilute it. Really? Like, wow. Yeah. It's probably like juices and stuff, yeah. you know? Yeah. So. But I thought, yeah. was, unless they drink cocktails, real people drink hard liquor. <laughs> yeah. I just thought it was like really interesting. As like, Manny yeah. sips his wine. <laughs> How? <laughs> but it is purple wine, right, Manny? Yeah. It is. So it's strong. <laughs> Listen, bitches, this is not color dyed, okay? This came for grapes! <laughs> yeah. But, like, we see more of the class divide and yeah. of how different they really are. Yeah, like, well, not, is, not really yeah. different, but how different they live. And yeah. it's going to present a lot of problems when Shalon's trying to go into the veil persona and to be able to try and, like, show that she... She's got to now pretend or, like, not show that she is a light eyes and has had all these, like... But, you know, I think it's more of a setup because she's covering for herself pretty well now. And she's in a position where she could be awesomely educated on all of the levels of society, which will allow her to be a phenomenal... A phenomenal? (laughs) She's going to be a phenomenal. She's going to be a phenomenal. She's going to be a phenomenal. We've had that... (laughs) <laughs> Phenomenal spy. Right. Yeah. yeah. I think the I agree with you because I feel like she has come to the realization already that she has no idea what the lower class does. So mm-hmm. she's become more aware of it and she's is like, definitely making more yeah. more of progress. A, yeah, yeah, she's making more progress, but she's paying more attention to different things to to recognize yeah. and learn. And okay. she realized that just because there's no murders that uh happened that were notable eyes, yeah. that down in the underbelly of society, There's, or like below them, they don't yeah. even pay attention. They just be swept over under the rug. Mm-hmm. And she went there to investigate the murders. Mm-hmm. And she's already realizing this such a divide. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, she's an extremely logical, smart person. You know, so. Except not just with herself though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the truth of yeah. the truth of reality. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, Sanderson right. really confronts a lot of social issues in this book. Um, just like what you said, Hitman, kind of the divide between the rich and the poor. With Kaladin um, infiltrating the Parshman camp, he really Ooh. kind of confronts racism too, oh oh which is God. which is always a big part of this story. I just out of cur- out of curiosity, one day I typed into a search engine. Um, Stormlight Chronicles and Stormlight Chronicles racism was one of the first to like, you know, wow. predetermined um, selections. Yes, searches. Yeah, searches. <laughs> so obviously it's something that people talk about. And in this book specifically, in, in um, Oathbringer, Sanderson really confronts both of those social issues pretty heavily throughout his characters. In and I'm going to yeah. branch off on what you're saying a little bit because this it's a, it's a really good point. But something that 
is amazing about Sanderson, it seems to be about his grasp on reality. Mm-hmm. Like all, like Kaladin's character itself and how he handled the injustices done upon him and how he's risen above it, but how how much effort that took. Yeah. And now the parchment, as they're being awakened, as we'll find out when we talk about Kaladin, yeah. but you know they're becoming, they didn't turn immediately into void bringers like we thought. They just woke up. Yeah. And mm-hmm. the spread is there, but they're not part of them yet. Mm-hmm. And it's like they're they're very jaded. Very well, we're learning jaded. that they but, not only were they in their slave form, but they could actually remember everything yeah. like oh, yeah. like knowing that your kid was getting taken away from you or your wife yeah. was getting Why? taken away from you, but you can't like Speak you know you need anything. to say something, but, but you can't get yourself to do it, anything. It, it, it amazes me because Kaladin's sitting there and while well, he's traveling with them and he's just like, I know this, like I was there. But then he's also like, but that's not going to lead to anything good. And yeah. it's like, it really kind of is really insightful about society in general, any society, just in terms of any mm-hmm. kind of, I mean, we all deal with situations like that. It's yeah. pretty impressive. That foresight that he puts into that. Ah, it's phenomenal. It's, it's I have, amazing. I have a little sidebar here just because we brought up the, the parchment or the person that I still get sure. confused. But um they're essentially the same, right? They're, they are. They're basically but... the same. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> but. <Racist. laughs> well, they are. Parshendi yeah. are just the awakened parchment. Right. They are the same. They're not so, different. So basically, one thing that I was thinking about, though, now realizing that all of the awoken parchment remember their slave form, they remember the stuff that happened to them. Like, I kind of wonder what the point of slave form is then. I thought that it was a way for them to deal with it, to just block mm. out these experiences. No, but they have full memory They were forced into it. They were forced into it. Is it forced into it? They enslaved okay. them. Like, the people, when they the, when the humans beat the Voidbringers or whatever, they enslaved them and forced them into So slavery. then our forms... So then it seems kind of like possibly that their forms aren't things that they discover, but things that kind of evolve. It's actually of... things that they lost. They already knew all these forms. In right. the past. And they They're just not say, recovering. In the very beginning of the book, um, Gavilar says, my ancestors discovered this. It's, it's a lot like you. Um, they discovered that we could capture a spren and trap it in a stone right, and have right. the stone take on certain things. And it was probably something to do with his ancestors discovering how to remove the spren from the Voidbringers, a.k.a. Parchman, mm-hmm. and turn them into this dull or essentially no spren form that uh, was a shell of yeah. what they were. So it seems like they're driving towards Par- Parshendi being almost spren-like mm-hmm. in terms of their... Um, their soul or their I, I don't even know how to describe it but their persona mm-hmm. they're almost spren like in the sense that when you remove part of them you know that's what and then that's what kind of Gavilar was saying I know how to bring you back this is how we capture spren in these stones we learn this and it's I and we can infuse you with it infuse you with it yeah so you know he however we don't know how he found that information yet but it's kind of interesting yeah didn't he have a block of black spin or black spin light. He had some uh, dark, or in the very beginning, he had some crazy spren trapped in a stone, and he gave it to Eshenai to bring back to her leader. Mm-hmm. But in that scene, that was probably the first remember. storm spren. It could have yeah. been. But I remember, I'm like, oh my god, this is. He had like a the same dark. Stormlight that uh, Niles had. We'll have uh, we'll have uh, fact checker Eam the Dream check it out, but and I think uh, yeah. he had something because he gave it to Eshenai and he's like, "Give that. That's the proof that we could bring your gods back," kind of thing. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. right. He might have an odium it was the type dog, spread. The spread. dog's been yeah, mm-hmm. like so. whatever oozes the black right. darkness. Right. Um. So are we jumping right into Kaladin, or you want to talk more about Shalon or save it? Let's keep. Let's, let's yeah. Let's. Let's, uh, what do you want to... I was going to say, keep talking about Kaladin. Keep, Finish yeah. Kaladin. Let's go off. Kaladin, then. Let's go Kaladin. So Kaladin, yeah. you know, he get, he gets into the Parshendi, and he immediately, of course, <clears throat> knowing it's Kaladin, he feels like a kind of a bond yeah. with him, because he's been an escaping slave before. He's mm-hmm. been in those situations, and he ends yeah. up helping him and persuading him to, <laughs> like, really start to trust him. Yeah. And Syl is hiding because she can see, Kaladin can see, but she can see, see the... Them. The so high spren of odium that right, are around yeah. the parchment. But they're not bonded to them yet. 
which just is kind of cool. Yeah, kinda, yeah. I was really surprised that uh, once that storm came around, they just ended up in like work form. I'm assuming. They, yeah, it's either, I, yeah it's it like, sounded so, like they so. ended up in some kind of a war type form because they have they have the, they have the armor yeah yeah they have the armor do they I yeah. wasn't sure I but it seems like they're very cognitive they're not uh, just about fighting mm-hmm. at least yeah. to me but mm-hmm. uh they have a lot of memories but also it's really fragmented and how do we call it details yeah. and so like they can play cards but they're like ah, does this I've seen them do Ace this take this one. Right. So they're really fuzzy on some of the, like, the final details. Yeah. Even though they watched it a thousand times. From, yeah. It's almost um, like they were, they're, they have the memories, but they're kind of, they were dream state. They're in yeah, dull form, so they're, they're kind of dumb. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh... They're in dull form? The parchment? Yeah. When they're the slaves, they're in dull no, form. No, 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 I mean, uh, yes, yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I thought you meant, uh, we, we were talking about how we think they're maybe in war form after the storm. Oh, yeah. We yeah. just, I misheard I don't think you. they're in yeah. war form after the storm. I, no. I they have the we armor, they have, like, plated it's armor. It's a par- partial, it's not, like, full. <clears throat> yeah. Might be, like, yeah. kind of an in the middle. Maybe, like, their true, knew, form, yeah. true form is kind true of... True normal the, form. <laughs> right, yeah. maybe. And I just, like, I know it's not going to happen, but I really want them to realize that like, getting revenge, you're not going to get anything for, like, you've been enslaved for 20,000 years or something. Right. 5,000 years since the yeah. last desolation. Yeah, about, right? 4,000 years. Mm-hmm. But, uh, if you pursue that, you could destroy both sides. Yeah. But they have a, ch- a chance here to stop the desolation almost. And, like, Calvary just become... says it, man. You're right. Become your own people. You already took the city. Like, they could just have that city and become, like, the Pacendi city. Yeah. And, and just he, slowly uh, become part of a civilization. And he even kind of talks mm-hmm. about him, like, don't be like, uh, when he, the humans are all in yeah. the cages, he's like, don't don't treat them kind of like how you were treated. Like, if you're taking the moral high ground, you have to be better. Than be better, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I, what cause yeah. do you have to yeah, fight? Yeah, fight, yeah. <laughs> Which and, is another impressive, just insightful thing that, uh, Sanderson's baking into these characters yeah. and yeah. we're all going to be following from all these I, different yeah. perspectives. I feel like if they follow it, it's just going to end up destroying them again. Because mm-hmm. I feel like they're still the minority. They, Even though they might have a whole city and it seems like a lot, yeah. but compared to the rest of humanity, they're still a minority. But I mean, that I think and, that the, the uh, Odium High Sprem want them to bond more of oh, those spread. Yeah, they They'll do. all turn into void bringers, which is what's going to cause uh, that's, the problem. Yeah, right? that's so. what uh, Odium definitely wants, I yeah. think. And mm-hmm. oh, it's so but good. In the end, he doesn't care if they die fighting. No. He just wants them to destroy, right. destroy everything. Yeah. yeah, right. So, um, in terms of Kaladin, apologies, I had to refill my wine glass. <laughs> um, in terms of Kaladin, I mean, this is pretty impressive stuff. So he, first of all, he teaches them how to, like, get through, hide, separate, and come back, uh, make axes, make fires. Uh, he uh, he teaches them how to make uh, the, the grain, grain into, into, like, yeah. Bread, so food. He's just so resourceful. Yeah. And again, you get to see how supremely resourceful Kaladin is, yeah. just from all of his experiences. Um, and then he travels with them. He helps them, literally earns their trust. They, yeah. They let him go, and then by the time they're getting to the meeting point that they're guiding all the parchment who are awakened by the storm to, which is the city that they, the uh, the Voidbringers helped sack, yeah. um, they're like literally asking Kaladin to join them. Yeah. It doesn't so have I, to be. It doesn't have to be a race against, It has, it has to be, uh, you know, people who were wronged against the downtrodden the guns, versus like, the slaves versus, versus and, yes, and, and, and Kaladin and, was like it, it's not gonna work that way it yeah. won't work that way yeah. yeah it can't they're like you, your people did this to you just join our side he's like it's it's not it's not really all of my people like mm-hmm, it's yeah. more complex than that but and it was pretty impressive I it's interesting to think about if somehow Kaladin met up with them earlier like uh, when he was still a slave when oh, he was still, yeah, like, he probably would have joined right up. Yeah, he was like, yes, I hate light eyes. I'm gonna join you guys. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and Crazy. the thing is, his morality was still would have been okay with that. Yeah, because exactly. it's all based on his own perspective. Yeah. Your own perspective, and so it wouldn't have broken the bond. Yeah. He could have been a. Radiant. I don't think I agree with that. 
He could have been a Radiant. I don't oh, think no. his morality would have been in, in line with it because Syl, even before he was uh, okay with killing certain things, Syl was not okay with it. So I think it's subconscious. It's not something that he just decides. Like, he knows that what he was thinking was wrong and that's why he was so struggled and had an internal struggle and thought even about suicide because the way that he really felt and what he was thinking mm -hmm. or forcing himself to think were completely different. Oh, mm -hmm. I think the suicide was just because he was hopeless in a situation at the time. It's like, there's nothing I can do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to die. Might as well do it on my own terms, I felt. Wow, dude. And Kaladin. I think he could have been in a different path. I definitely think he could have been. I think that um, <clears throat> it was later experiences that kind of like changed his point of view and made him realize that these old thoughts, it, it was like, even though deep down he f was starting to get context for why these things were bad, the forefront of his mind, his instinctual mind, still hadn't caught up yet. So I think that's why, like, for example, like when he was going to kill um, the king Alucar, Alucar. So like, even though his, his instinctual self is like, oh yeah, he needs to go down, he'd already been through a lot of this change. So his like, his, the logic base that he's dealing with was in kind of in conflict with what his instincts were. And now his instincts are starting to catch up to what, you know, his experience have said. But if he was in that situation before he had that base underneath that's coming up to the forefront, who knows what he would have done. He might have thought, like, he might have had no conflict over it. I two, two comments right there. Uh, so branching off of that, how about Elokar? We haven't given him any love. Before we get on that. <laughs> Ow! Before. Uh, I got, this is I from got the stopped. prologue. Yeah, Gavilar removed something from his pocket, a sphere. It was dark, yet somehow still glowed, as if it had an aura of blackness, a phantom light that was not light. Faintly violet, it screamed to suck in the light around it. Oh. So, Odium it was that black captured. storm light that, yeah. uh... I bet they, they had, had an Odium Spren in that shit. Yeah. Some kind of dark Spren. It's, it sounds like those Spren like to gobble up sp storm light. Like, suck light out know. of it. It said it, well, it screamed to gather up light around yeah. it. Yeah. But I don't know if that light will be the storm light. I think it, it was feeling like a, like a black hole. It's just kind of like a black yeah. hole. Like okay. a, well, I think we're going to get some but interesting... we'll find out. Yeah. Hopefully. yeah. We'll get some interesting tidbits about the nature of Odium and his spren, I think, throughout this book. And obviously, yeah. the many next books that are going to come out. Mm -hmm. But, um... So, thanks, yeah. uh, So, Checker. at the end, when they got to the Pashendi city... Okay. And Callan's like, oh... There's a void finger. And he, he realized that. He's like, I gotta go. And he takes the... Stormlight? Uh, he steals all his gems back. Yeah. And then... I just want to know... How... The percent he traveled with. I'm gonna react to that. They like, have a... Uh, it seems like, at least from that part, that they have a form or something... A creature that they gave a spren that they could fly with. Oh, uh, I... As part of the, the Odium Yeah, I but think I'm, it was. I think they have. I think similar to the ten orders that the uh, the Knights Radiance have. The Odium, all the um, they're gonna be like almost ten similar or yeah. opposite ones that they have that have similar powers no, with what, the negative powers. What I was talking about was the percentage the people he traveled he was with, with, how they feel about. Like it. Oh, he yeah. was on the on the brink, like of kind of breaking through like, to them. Split them. And like made them realize that war is not the option. Yeah. But then he took off, and the that feeling of betrayal. I'm not your. He said, "I'm not your enemy." But the problem was that if he had convinced them before they arrived to the city of Parsh, yeah. Parshendi, mm -hmm. he would have had a chance. But he knew when he got there, there was no chance. Yeah, there was well, too many. And if he persuades just the small little group that he's been traveling with. There's thou tens 50, of thousands, yeah. fifty thousand. The thing is, yeah, there's but so he, many. I think he planted he, a seed. See, I think he how is that seed gonna plant now? Since I don't, I don't think that they'll oh, well. that seed will lose because he left and he said, "I'm not your enemy," and he took off. I think they'll be like, "It'll take time." It'll take know. time, but I think they'll over yeah. time they'll think that guy didn't really do anything, didn't betray us, whatever. It, but it's because they're down there, and he looked. Down on them is like, oh, like he couldn't really see, see the reaction. Focus, but he's worried about he's that. He's like, obviously. oh, that's like betrayal he sees, and but I, don't I, I don't know if it's self internalized how he I, felt. Yes, I about think it's it. It might be real. Them. They might feel betrayed, but honestly, he didn't do anything but help them get to where they wanted to I, go. No, that's true. 
but well, he, he used have, them to find information on yeah. an enemy. Like, is he seeing that? Like, are they seeing? Oh, he just used us to see what our city is, what our what strength we're doing. is, yeah. how many of us gathered. There's so I, much information he got. I think that they can use yeah. against them. I think that we'll get some point of views in interludes at least from some of those from characters. some of those Parshendi mm-hmm. that, or Parshmen that became Parshendi that Kaladin helped yeah. but we'll have to find out because yeah. should we even yeah. like be calling them Parshmen or Parshendi we should probably be using their what's their term their now? real term what is it um, void bringers <laughs> <laughs> those damned void bringers <laughs> it's interesting um, I think we're gonna find out a lot that yeah what in, in the stories it's always baked like this side versus this side and it seems like the reality of the situation like in real life is significantly more complex more complex, yes. complex. Yep. Yeah. yeah it's not yeah. there's this other side that's using this side to take out this side yeah. right, right. And that audience didn't exist these two could coexist yeah. mm-hmm. like it'd take work yeah. but it would be possible it's but really it's- interesting I, I actually like that a ton because yeah. Throughout the first two books, you're thinking Odium, like this <laughs> evil, and you're like, Odium is evil. But then at the same time, the things that he uses to get what he wants done are not are evil. not evil. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, oh, yeah. this is again hitting a crazy awesome because the Pacendi are like point. In general, without Odium and being awakened, they're like peaceful. They're really in touch yeah. as a group collective with like that and like they're not really raging war it's all like a collective and yeah um, all of a sudden now Odium comes in I'm like oh we well, have these superpowers mm-hmm. that are amazing lightning and strength yeah. and better armor but they're even they, when they describe that storm form they're like inside souls or yeah nuts. it's right. like it suppresses them yeah and brings out the aggression like takes over and like the inside like the inner self like no this is not right eh. but it's suppressed dude so we gotta get to so we might as well just talk Kaladin through a little bit because we got a little bit more so he bolts right mm-hmm. and then the high storm's coming which nobody knew about because high, stor- high storms are not on the same cadence that you still speak. knew about it still did <laughs> how do you know about high storms <clears throat> oh I just felt it in my bones I got humans a can't do that <laughs> <laughs> I, got, um, I got a Hail Mary theory about high storms look, we're gonna talk about oh. Brent's theory but before we do that I gotta say badass Kaladin flies up he orders Parshendi around <laughs> he uh, he consults with the st- the Stormfather, Storm Father. and uh, unfortunately, the Stormfather can't do anything because he can't stop blowing. Yeah. He's like, "I'm a storm. This mm-hmm. fire stop burning. That's what I yeah, do." I yeah, I don't like that. When you try to like Stormfather save these people, like, come on, Calvin, like, he's it's a, a storm, storm. man. <laughs> 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 but you know what? It's he tried, not. and I give the Stormfather credit because Kelvin's like, he almost seemed to think about it. Yeah, he second. considered yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> and then he's like. I actually, I would cease to exist if I did that. Yeah. So, um, but I, I did like Kaladin's power. Listeners. I think that's what they're, they're, they're actually listeners. listeners. They're listeners. And that is good. We'll okay. start calling them by the real word. Like Hershendi. Listeners. listeners. <laughs> void bringers. Void that's an interesting way to say void bringers. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I really did like that scene where Kaladin used the windspread. Oh, with that was Sil awesome. To create yeah. a wedge in the. Uh, in the storm oh, to save storm those and and Syl so totally swatted one of them away, and she was like, "He's mine." <laughs> <laughs> She's getting a little Such jealous, a jealous so. little friend. <laughs> it's almost like I well, wonder, maybe they were trying to see if they could form a bond with him. Like yeah. there has to be something to that. It's yeah, not right. Just I, like being oh jealous. yeah, yeah. I, I almost right. wonder kidding. if um, when Spren, as Spren kind of evolve back to their higher mm-hmm. levels, it's almost like when Spren could become honor spread mm. with mm. help mm-hmm. maybe but it's pretty funny yeah. but they all stayed right with Kaladin. i mean he used the wind spring to help yeah. which was pretty cool yeah that was so badass yeah. Yeah. when i read that i felt like kind of like you but like the honor spread and then like the wind spread was like the Baseball. support in it yeah and like mm-hmm. they, they could like control wind spread so i'm thinking like the other orders have their own spin do they have like lesser spin that they can order around. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Because, I mean, um, he is a Windrunner, right? Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
It's really cool, though. I was super pumped by that scene. Yeah. I was like, oh, man, that was awesome. That was awesome. awesome. So, <laughs> whack! <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's awesome. I was on edge for that whole time Ooh. when I was reading that part because I was like, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen to Kaladin? What's going to happen to Kaladin? Yeah. What's going to happen to Kaladin? Yeah. But I'm glad that he made it back safe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, something to kind of go back because I was researching while you guys were having a conversation <laughs> and didn't get to give my two cents. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So now he's going to give three cents. Yeah. <laughs> That's who of many. Um, Kaladin being with the, uh, the listeners uh-huh. mm-hmm. uh, and him experiencing it. Like I know we were talking about, oh, he was planting a seed and all this stuff. But I think it was really good for him too because uh, he was getting the perspective of them. Because he thought, oh, I, I can relate to you. I know what you're going through. And then when he kind of said that to him, the guy's like, that was for part of your life, bitch. Yeah, I was yeah. born like this. Yeah, I was like, did you have to have your mother or any of this experiences? It was kind of like eye opening. Like, no, you really don't understand, dude. Them. You right. kind of have a little glimpse a little, of what yeah. they've gone through, but that doesn't mean that you understand. Another, them. another yeah. add in to the complexity because look at Kaladin and what happened to him from birth to one point to one point to another yeah. was so much hardship and a different hardship. And now you're talking about all these different types of hardship, and you realize. They're comparable, but not comparable at all at the same time. Mm. So it's there's too much complexity around all of yeah. that, mm-hmm. and it's so everyone will always find yeah. the difference. And not a lot of times they may find a similarity to relate on, but a lot of times people will settle on the difference. Of the it. difference. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. Your is, hardship was shorter I than mine. Say. This was this different than yours. This was you know it's like it's really cool because the complexity is so real. Sorry, mm-hmm. Ben. Uh, <laughs> I, no, it, that's right. But I was something another perspective. You can't compare hardships to each other. Like, you can, but just because, let's say, like, oh, man, I haven't eaten all day. I'm super hungry. Someone's like, oh, don't even compare your hunger to someone who hasn't, in, like, Africa or something. Like, yeah. They're, they're starving. Like, you haven't eaten for I'm weeks. I'm sorry, dude. I'm, I'm just really hungry. Like, I'm not trying to, like, downplay those, but my own play right now is right. I'm starving. I need to eat. <laughs> I, I think anybody that said anything to you about that would be ridiculously dumb. Well, but if you were to say, "Oh, I'm, a, I'm hungry," I can totally see how people in Africa could be hungry. Like, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but, yeah, right. Not, You're an imbecile. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm just saying that a lot of people will be like, "Your pain doesn't matter because there's people worse off than uh, you." Uh, ah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they're dismissive matter. of your hardship. Yeah. 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 And the thing is, Calden, for his. He was a slave, or whatever it was, was very terrible compared mm-hmm. to a parchment's lifetime as a slave. They don't get beat. The there's like labor intensive maybe, but it's not like life threatening. Mm-hmm. They're not. If you I, talk up, you're gonna die. I I think it's different. It's yeah. still they're both terrible, but for them to dismiss each other, just yeah. It's wrong. I, think. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, I disagree yeah. with you. I so mm. I actually think I don't. I, I don't necessarily disagree, but I also think it's interesting that Kaladin is unique because because he found his purpose as a slave. Even he even still was giving him shit before, like when he broke free from being a slave and was in Delinar's guard. She was like. You're even it's, worse man. off than when you were a slave. Like yeah. your personality needs purpose. It's really interesting, Mm -hmm. but I I kind of agree with what Ben's saying. The point is that you don't, no matter what, we're not, we don't, until something, like, something is invented where we could just, like, send our shit from our head to, like, somebody else. You don't really, truly know how it's, it's twisted. I will say the Parshendi's shit was bad, Mm -hmm. but they're, because the way that I view the Parshendi is worse than anything because they're trapped in like a cloud a right. cloud of uh, dim wittedness dim wittedness yeah. and then they're like secretly knowing that right. they're not dim witted yeah that to me is worse than anything else like the work they done the slave like the selling the worst part is them knowing like being something's wrong. trapped yeah. in this like helpless helpless Form. blank state yeah, so, yeah, they're they're it, very aware of what's yeah. happening to them. It's just that when they're in that dull form, it's almost like they can't do any anything about it, and they're just forced to accept it and suffer through it. It's super yeah. interesting, but again, I, it's bad. I'm yeah. not saying it's not, but yeah. I'm saying 
It's hard to uh, you can't, you can't compare him, yeah. is what he's saying. It's he's not really saying yeah. one's worse than the Take other. Take away someone yeah. else's suffering because someone else is suffering more. Yeah. Yeah. I, in general, always disagree with that tactic of, well, your experience was different from mine, therefore what you're saying doesn't apply. It's like, no, but, something's either true or it's not. It but, may not apply, again, but you need to be open-minded enough again, to listen though, to it still. This yeah. is some uh, ingenious insight from Sanderson because he's at least bringing in a lot of questions about this. Mm-hmm. Without and the best thing about it is he's giving us all the perspectives. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's not really definitive answers, which is pretty cool. Right. Right. There's and no I straight think, up preaching. Yeah. Yeah. There exactly. I've read yes. some books with that damn preaching. <laughs> I know. Man, and it's always frustrating. Oh, it's like dude. even if you're right, the fact that you don't look at the other point of views is frustrating. So thank you, know? you Brandon Sanderson, for enlightening <laughs> right. people to all kinds of things without Preaching down our gullets. Right. <laughs> but um, anyway, so we got to move from yeah. uh, Kaladin because we got a lot to talk about. So Who's let's go though? back to Dalinar. Cool. Because Dalinar does a few things. Well, he gets married. Hmm. We know that. We did talk about it. He has the Storm yeah. Father marry him in Navani. I thought mm-hmm. that was really surprising that Storm was like, yeah, I'll marry you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The way he explains it makes sense. Too. Yeah, he He's does, all about right? bonds. He's just and like, like, I'm a yeah. Storm. I can do that, right? <laughs> and Dalinar's a bondsmith? Is that what his uh, yeah. class is? <laughs> but, uh, during the wedding, after they explain how he's all about bonds and togetherness, uh, he talks oh, to the Ardent, who's was his friend, one of his leads, and it's like, I, you can't, like, uh, like, how can you be this heretic now? And uh, Dallin was like, no, I'm, I'm not really a heretic. I'm just, there's more to the religion than you guys know. Mm-hmm. And you got to realize that I might say the Almighty is dead, but he existed and he was just part of something bigger. There's something above Dude. him, Papu. Mm-hmm. A- another oh amazing my gosh, insight. Phenomenal. Another insight. I love on... that whole story that he did when he was wrestling the guy and he said about the tying. Of the... Oh, the bow. Oh, so so good. Good. Phenomenal. I was Dude. like, oh my gosh, this is so good. Like We think that something, just because it's tradition, it's the way that it's be- it's mm-hmm. done, when really it came from something completely something. useless. Yeah. 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 And, and that's, that's a, a, le- a lesson that's, again, super deep. And also that transcends to everything. Mm -hmm. Literally, it goes back so far you don't even know anymore. You Mm -hmm. don't know. And again, everything that you take from that far away, you have to take with a grain of salt. Pretty dope. Right. Just awesome. Um, Uh, What did they call it? um, What did they call the... The Hakka. uh, The what? The Hakka. Hakka? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's like their belt, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, And they're wrapping it three times instead of twice. Right. (laughs) This is uh, skipping ahead with Dalinar a little bit, but I think this is a really good lead-in because that story was really excellent. And then um, later when um, Dalinar eventually convinces... um, Teravangian to show up. He has an amazing yes. ethical discussion with Teravangian oh, oh. Yes. regarding the four um, hog farmers. Three, uh, three of them allied to kill another one, and there's four suspects. Three of them are guilty. One of them is innocent. As as a law, as like a, a force of law, what do you do to get justice? Do you hang all four of them like Teravangian says you need to do? Yeah. Or do you lessen the crime and put all four of them in jail knowing that one of them's in, in innocent and you don't want to murder him? Or do you let all four of them walk away? It's an, an amazing ethical section that uh, that Sanderson puts in with um, Dalinar and Teravangian that really, really drives home. I know yes. what my view is. Uh, I, dude, okay, actually, we gotta do a quick round circle. We're not gonna spend a lot of time discussing our philosophies because that will take a whole episode. Right, on its own. right. Um, so the question is uh, your response to the four suspects, three, and three are guilty, are guilty, starting with the captain. Oh man, uh. I, I guess I would go with the route that the king in the story took and imprison all four. Kill none of them, but imprison all four because you can't let murderers go. But at the same time, it would be terrible to kill an innocent guy. you got to at least let him live out his life even though it's in prison, which is terrible. So that's that's what I say. Even Manny. dream. 
Mm. He's like, I do all of them. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm conflicted because I don't think that it's okay to take the life of an innocent person right. to make sure that you're getting rid of three terrible human beings. So right. you definitely don't agree with Teravangian. No, I don't think that that's the best solution. But I don't think that just letting them all free. I don't know. I feel like right. there's there's too many things missing from that. <laughs> situation yeah like i guess there's not enough investigation yeah, yeah there's not enough investigation so many to do it not enough investigation so, so what are you see. doing while you're investigating i would put them in prison while they're i'm investigating next all right now this is assuming not in today's society but in the society in the book okay because those are different societies. there is a difference <laughs> <laughs> but in that town sure. and if i was the Guy in charge, the Mayor, judge. king, whatever, judge. Yeah. The high lord. I would kill them all. Okay. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> the, <laughs> hitman. <laughs> the hitman kills them all. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> I know what you're saying about the society. You don't know why. It's because in that society, in that small town, being in a jail, <coughs> one, it's just a death sentence. You go rot in there. Yeah. But, so it's almost mostly just to be done, you, you're killed. Mm. But you can't have those guys out knowing they got away with it. It just inspire more delinquents in the town. It's like a feel factor. Because yeah. in that society, it's people will take that and run with it. Take a grain yeah. of salt. What's that saying? They take when advantage they take of it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, take advantage. All right. Ooh, that's such a tough one. You don't have um, to go in too deep, but you just got to kind of give us a brush. I would say um, I would probably do what they did in the book and uh, imprison them. Okay. So what I would do, because I think that uh, innocent people shouldn't be punished because there are evil people out there. And I think that a lot of evil things are done because you're trying to stop evil and you end up harming innocent people. Mm -hmm. So what I would do is I would interview them all separately and I would say... I want you to tell me if you, or like, uh, if you, um, d- should you be imprisoned or should you be let go? Okay. And what I would say is if all of you, if all four of you say that you should be let go, then I'll let you go. If just one of you say that you should be imprisoned, then I'm going to imprison you. And I would say, and my hopes is that the innocent person will make a moral decision to either do what's good for the population by saying we should be imprisoned mm-hmm. or by saying we should be let go and not punishing that innocent person. I would uh, build That's on a lot of faith in people. Yeah, like yeah. That. So, I'm the same. I'm not. So, I'm not. Uh, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying that he has an obligation to do one or the other. I'm just saying that I think it's up to the innocent person to say, "Do I want to sacrifice my life for the greater good, or should I be allowed to not be punished for their crimes?" I would implore a similar tactic, but do it differently. I would basically provide them a game, and the game would be that um, werewolf. Now, <laughs> the game werewolf. would be. You that, win or um, you die. <laughs> I would give a similar situation where if you all say that you're innocent, uh, I did not think we were supposed I to give no, no, wait. Yeah, yeah, I would yeah, say. We got I would say, in that going detail. If you all say that, um, if you say that you're innocent, fine. You may or may not be let go. Go. If you say that you're guilty, but you rat out the other guilty people, then you will be vindicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do they know? Well, the three, the three, three the are, okay, okay. I would give them a situation which would basically make it so that you're all gonna have some shitty outcome, unless. You but secretly, if they all said they're innocent, I would let them all go. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Uh, the thing I is, like, say, I'm assuming the game. when they I interrogate the, the game. people, mm-hmm. they're pretty decent at it. No, I mean. I don't think you so. You don't think so? I, think you don't think like, I mean, I'd be willing to bet that they'd be able to figure it out. But I'm I, just saying, yeah. if there is no way to figure they're it saying, out, the that's whole thing what is they're saying there's no yeah. So anyway, we won't yeah. spend too long on it, but you should think about it, because it's pretty awesome to think about. Yeah. What about Andrew went first? Oh, Andrew went yeah. first. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He said what about you, Andrew? Him. What's your opinion? He said he would imprison him. Andrew, I would got you, him. bro. All right, guys. He'd imprison uh, him, and then Ben would sneak in and kill them all in prison. So uh, the other thing that's that- pretty badass about the Blackthorn is not only did in the previous book did he fight like toe-to-toe with Zeth for a little while, 
as a young man, he makes everybody look like a hillbilly or a terrible fighter, <laughs> even Alethi, because when he killed that, and I know the hitman wants to talk about this because he's really proud about Delinar's, it's almost like he was training Delinar, but uh, <laughs> Delinar oh taking God. out that pitiful assassin that was yeah, trying yeah. to kill Gavilar. First of all, Delinar was like, man, I need my knife. I can't cut my pork roast. <laughs> so I was like, eh, I think my captain has it. And he just like walks outside into the storm front. The high storm. Like, high storm. Like, eh, it's not that bad. And then he walks over there. Knocks <laughs> on the door. He's just pounding on the door outside. And they, does he bust They don't it answer. Open? You know they he cuts it with the shard blade yeah. because they don't answer. <laughs> he like, cuts it open. It's like, hey, do you have my knife? <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, use what? your shard blade, jerk. <laughs> and they're like, no. They said no, so he goes back. <laughs> and he still has his cup with him. And he sits back down. And he's doing some storm water. <laughs> it was storm just... water? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Cheers to that. Let's drink our storm water. <laughs> Everyone's just staring at him. Even his brother is like, what are you doing? <laughs> you madman. I was like, I was looking for a knife. <laughs> and so he's just like chilling and drinking and we might at this time he is drunk yes. yeah <laughs> and he's like man I need a knife and finally he figures out the sign to tell the master servant get me a knife <laughs> <laughs> they give him a fucking I love those hand yeah. signals Ben was flashing <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he's like, it's like a blood knife or something. I didn't know you knew sign language. <laughs> ben knows service. He's been a, he's ben been doing a his rendition of the the old 2000 hit. I say it here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like a bottom knife, and he just bends it in the hand by accident. <laughs> it's like, man. And then he's still just kind of like running around. I was like, I need a knife. I need a knife. And then it's like, boom, there's a knife. That guy has it. He's just. Stab my brother. <laughs> <laughs> he just kicks out the fucking chair leg <laughs> and slams his head on the table. It sounds like this sounds like uh, drunk history. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's like our private knife. But this is my favorite scene in this book it's so great, far. Yeah. Oh. And then he takes the knife that's standing on the table and stabs the guy, and then he just pours his wine like this. Yeah, this is a nice knife. <laughs> I like it. And he pulls it, cleans it off a little bit, not thoroughly. Just some wine on it to get the excess blood. It's alcohol. Yeah. And yeah. then he starts cutting his steak with oh, it. God. I'm like, oh, it's so good. <laughs> That's so better than dream. Ben's like, even though I, the reason I love that scene so much is because it reminds me of my last birthday. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> it's just like so crazy. But in reality, during that time, it just proves. Uh, to the two quarters <coughs> who bought the armor for Donna, whose prospective wife, yeah. how strong and how much they could protect their family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, inadvertently, without even thinking about it, it's like, oh, Assassin, you're dead. Yeah. Donna, you did knife for Assassin, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead. You're dead. You're yeah. dead. That, that scene was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, that and then that's also the scene I think he decided. He's like, I'll do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'll marry her. I'll marry her. But yeah. yeah, whatever. <laughs> Because he sees that glorious blonde hair. Blonde hair. Mm. <laughs> Blowing which, like, wind. which is also what Adeline was attracted to with, with Shalon. Uh, Shalon. Her red hair. So first noticed her hair. Is uh, how Alephi ha are pretty cool because they're, well, they're very like tall. They're very dark. They're, they tend to be very tan with dark hair. Um, but it's really cool <laughs> that they don't, they don't. Um, You're not very tan. <laughs> I'm tall and I have dark hair, man. <laughs> so you feel more Sweden? <laughs> our, our, sw our Swedish, the Swedish member of our group. <laughs> Aren't Swedish people blonde? A lot of them, not all of them. Not this one. <laughs> I'm not Swedish. <laughs> That's amazing. No, but uh, he, it, it's really interesting because Adolin, uh, although his brother has less mixed hair, it's interesting that the hair doesn't ever blend. They just have like <laughs> strips. So Adolin yeah. <laughs> has dark hair with strips of straight blonde. Yeah. And he's pretty much, they kind of describe him as being half and half, I think. Mm. And it's interesting because Dalinar's uh, political marriage was with a foreign 
uh, people, yeah. foreign family, mm-hmm. and that's why they have kind of what the Alethi would call exotic yeah, uh, mixed features. Yep. But it's really interesting because mm-hmm. Adolin has the same kind of thought when he sees uh-huh. Milan with the red, you know, the red yeah. hair, right. horn eater type hair, like uh, father, like too, because yeah, uh, Adolin has, I would say, a really like a mixture of his father and his mother yeah. so far, mm-hmm. and Renarin, who's got the straight blonde hair, is definitely like the his mother. mother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree. Maybe I thought maybe unless we got a Jon yeah. Snow situation happening. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I was wrong, but I thought Ad- Adeline had pure blonde hair. Uh, Adel- Adeline he has blonde hair. Uh, blonde and black. Yeah, he has blonde and black. I, I, I'm not sure, but blonde and black. I thought it was hair. all blonde. I thought Renarin yeah, I had remember. darker hair, but apparently I, I can't say. I thought Renarin had. Renarin, you, Renarin you do the audiobook, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've had too many goblets of violet. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. No, right. but, but, but yeah, uh, Renarin, check up his hair. Blonde or dark? Both I them. think it's dark. Adolin definitely has blonde. I thought it's yeah. Adolin's blonde. hair is mostly blonde with streaks of a lefty black. Okay, uh, and uh, Renarin is mostly dark. With streaks of blonde. I'll have to yes. look him up. All right, maybe. Do it. Shit. Comment down. All right, so. so what's up? Oh yeah. Know what... So uh, we got so we got through Dalinar, uh, the badass, but we've got Shallan, mm-hmm. and uh, she fights the Night Mother. Right. Well, do we, before we get to there, do we want to finish Dalinar and talk about? So he. Um, yeah. Finish as him he's, up. Yeah. Real quickly. So then, as he, one of the main things he's trying to do is unite the whole kingdoms, and he's starting to. Um, his past is where. I think part of the reason they're going back and visiting this pass is to explain or kind of introduce you to the conflict with his um, wife oh, and yeah. his the the night. Every, not only night that, let me add on because but, you're right, and also his history is catching up with him when he's trying to negotiate. Because people think that he's he's known for his ruthless tactics and this like war like war hungry man, and right. all of a sudden they're like, so you want a portal directly into the middle of our cities, right? Um, but he learns from... Oh, wait, yeah. He's more black than blonde. That's what I thought. He learns from uh, the Stormfather, though, that the the uh, visions can be shown to anyone. <laughs> so he starts to concoct a plan, and that's where you get the idea that he's going to go visit some people during the next storm. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is going to be awesome. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. awesome. <laughs> surprise! And also... Yeah, <laughs> surprise! The best thing about it is, not only could he have these meetings, he also has done the visions, like investigating them. So he's kind of, in a way, kind of, and he's he's homeboys with the uh, Stormfather too. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So he could kind of just yeah, he's gonna take it to whatever. Yeah, he's gonna have a lot of fun with this. I, I love I love that one old lady that he was talking to. Uh, the, the queen, queen of, the queen, uh, yeah. Queen, and I love yeah. the, how she was just like, like I'm not gonna be the one that you know allows you in here, and then you betray us, and blah blah blah. And then she's like, But if you're legit, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love that too. <laughs> Dude. She's like, I'm not so stupid to believe, yeah. and, but I'm also not that uh, that dumb queen or whatever. I don't know. Right. She she am, yeah, raised yeah. it really yeah. well. She's like, sometimes I can be that dumb, but I'm not that. Like, sometimes yeah. I could be both, but, yeah, but I'm, I'm not, not gonna that. let it happen. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty sweet. She's pretty, All right. she's pretty hilarious. So, what do you guys think? So, Shalon, she's clearly cracking a little bit. Yeah. Um, but she's still badass as hell. Sure and is. Then, so she finds the spren, the creepy, like, oily spren, mm-hmm. which in my opinion, reminded me a lot of um, Dalinar's vision. vision when he was fighting those oily dogs right. with yeah. the, um, the fire the poker. poker. <laughs> but the, it's the night For mother. me, it reminded me of yeah. uh, Miyazaki film. Yes! Oh, mm. yes. good call. Spirit of the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the most but, Swedish but, thing um, you've ever done. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> What a so um, the, the thing that's pretty cool is Shalon is clearly dealing with her own internal conflict, but it doesn't stop her from kind of doing the shit that she needs to do. Yeah. And so she finds the spren. I think, what, I, correct me if I'm wrong, because it's been a little bit for me, but she was drawing and she drew something goofy and it led her to, similar to how she was drawing pattern head. Uh, right. Kind of to, to draw. She <coughs> saw some drawings that she didn't sprint. recognize. Remember yeah. doing. Yeah. Remember doing. Oh, so, like, someone else that's like right. drew that's those right. drawings. Yes. Bio style, stairwell. 
Yeah. And uh, also... The blackness. Right. Yes. The total the, blackness. The nine also, horse heads yeah. that are all rearing in pain. Kind of like yeah. shadows. There's a picture of it in but, the book, uh, too, which is pretty ghastly if uh, you yeah. have the book at home uh, readers. We'll pull this up. But um, the, the cool thing yeah. is... Like this? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. But Dude, what you got Andrew? Go ahead. The ghost yeah. bloods who... <laughs> like they want her to be a part of the ghost bloods yeah but she's like no i'm not down with that they assign her this mission to find out what's wrong mm. Mm. in uh the city and uh what's his name how do you say it Maurice. Uh, uh, what Maurice? Maurice. the leader Maurice. of the ghost Maurice. bloods sorry well mm-hmm. he's not the leader mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> I keep calling him that. He's like a, he's <laughs> he's got a chicken on his shoulder, of... so he's clearly in charge. <laughs> <laughs> he has authority. Chicken. He has authority, yes. but um, he does, it, especially in this particular group. Mays yeah. assigns her this task, and she even tells him like, "I don't want to be part of your group." It's like <laughs> you're kind Just of do already it. are. Yeah. You're gonna do it. You're part of us, and he's. He's very young Delinar like. Yeah. <laughs> eh, she don't really have a choice. She she uh yeah. Moraes uses her brother as leverage. Uh yeah. he basically says, "Oh, it's That's something true. that you're oh, going to yeah, do he... already anyway, so you might as well save your brother and help us out, right?" No, he's pretty much but, saying like you feel the ba- the badness or the darkness here. You feel it, so you're going to get rid of it anyway. Something to comment yeah. that we haven't commented on book is throughout this entire part everyone Every character is commenting on something dark they feel in the, um, the your city. Theory. Yeah, in the city. They, city. they feel. Well, no, I thought it was only her. The, the, it's the not only It's her. only her that. It's not only her. Well, he felt it. Well, she. Moez felt it. Yeah, well, but, he comments on it, but what? The one thing though is she even said she said <laughs> that me and um, uh, Renarin were able to recognize or could feel it, but Dalinar couldn't. Mm. That Dalinar and what other people could, ah, and they, I see what you're they think that it's because of this, that something to do with the being a radiant. It mm-hmm. could be well, Dalinar is a radiant, but it could be the type of radiant yeah. they are. And and I think it was pretty cool though that so Ghost Bloods. I know they're trying to kill Yes Yes now. Well, they, they were tried to kill her because she was opposition to the. They want to be in charge, and she was more of the belief that uh, mm-hmm. her. Her brother was going to be in charge. Mm-hmm. Or finding right, the truth. Right, because she was... But I think now that she's a Radiant, they would change their tune a little you bit. You think so? I think so, because I think all of those groups, their goals are done, because the Desolations are back. The Heralds <laughs> are back. The Radiants are back. All the goals are done. So now all the groups got to figure out... Yeah. How what, do we, what what do we adapt? Like, yeah, like the one, Ghost yeah. Bloods yeah. were trying to stop the... Brotherhood of Honor, or the Brothers of Honor, or whatever it was, for bringing the Desolations back. But then suddenly they're like, well, it's all back. Right. Yeah. So I, now they're yeah. just... They're all like AOL after broadband. Right. Yeah. <laughs> what do, what do we yeah, do now? Yeah, that's an amazing point. I'm kind, <laughs> of, I'm kind of wondering how Teravangian is going to re... If I know. he reassesses his priorities. Because he knows that Dalinar is basically working alone out there. Is he going to go through with his original plan and just off Dalinar? Or because so much has changed, is he going to try to use this to some other ends? Right. Does he want to now keep Dalinar yeah. alive? We don't know. Yeah, I feel that uh, he's going to try to use Dalinar, not off him right now, because right now he's the figurehead of power out there. So if he can manipulate him into doing his bidding, it'd be way better than just killing him right. and having something else just like... Yeah. Unexpected come along. Even in the diagram, remember from last book, there yeah. was a comment Dalinar will, you either need to kill him immediately mm-hmm. or he could become, depending on the outcome, yeah. a great ally. Okay, right. mm-hmm. That's a Tard Vangian. Tar yeah. right. yeah. And his great plan. Diagram. The diagram. Super interesting. Now, but talk, it, talking to this group, uh, at some point he said, doesn't he, he says her brother's name to like get her to. Oh. Right, how, how he had already told her that he was bringing her brothers. No, okay. the dead brother. The dead, but he but said he the says, dead brother, right? He said, but don't he, you want to know about Halloran? Yeah. He offered to give information about Halloran. Oh, now I have a question. Shalon already figured out about the fact that no, Kaladin no, killed. no, not, yet. not then, not at this point, not at that point. Uh, but Adolin later, she Adolin told him. Adolin yeah. told him, like, you know <laughs> who killed, 
who but she handled it really player. well. Well, well here, hold on, hold on a second. <laughs> so my she question, well, but I think she just like pushed it down like she normally so does. My question is, but even so, it. she logically said, "Oh, she went through a chain of lot, but she did shove it down though. She shoved it down. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> like she's like, uh, I'll do it this later." And so she yeah, didn't like she shoves it down. Go crazy, but. She, she like acted very does. much like we hear her acting with her mother. Yeah. No, she, can't think about it. Don't want to. Yeah. Don't yeah. Cool. yeah. What were you gonna say, Brett? I was gonna say um, I'm not. I'm wondering if because because he brought up her brother's name, so obviously he has information about him, and like what other information could he have other than the fact that he's dead? But she already knows that he's dead. Oh. But I'm wondering if maybe he's not dead, and that maybe he gave away his blade or no, something. No, I was like gonna that. say I have the, theory. I think the information that she wants mm-hmm. is how she how did uh, her brother get the shell blade, the shell plate? Yes. Why and is he was fighting he in yeah. that war? Like, but I thought he already had it. No, like well, when he, he left home, he didn't have anything. Yeah. Then well, how did she know that was his blade? Because when he, he came, came back. back. Oh yeah, he came and he back threatened their father. and he threatened the father. Oh, with yeah, yeah, he okay, suddenly okay, okay, had okay, it. But the thing is, I, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I'm like ninety nine point nine percent sure that. Her brother was part of the Ghost Bloods, and mm. they gave him those pieces of uh, equipment, the shard blade, the shard plate, to further their goals. I actually disagree. Mm. But and I, I'll tell you uh, after. I'll and then uh, it just went horribly long, wrong for him because what are the chances of someone in full shard plate, shard blade, dying to so some rando on the battlefield? With a knife, who just like he was blessed with this uh, wooden spin and honor spin, he just threw it right in the eye plate yeah. and died. Mm-hmm. Like the chances of that happening, no one could predict that. Mm-hmm. So like this is a safe investment, and I, it just right. went wrong. So uh, because the dad joined the Ghost Bloods, I think that it was that Helleram either joined Amaran. the Sons of Honor, not Amaran, yeah, no. Helleram. Uh, joined the Sons of Honor or the Skybreakers, the, the other two groups that were out well, there. The not the Sons of Honor, because that's Amaram's group. Yes. But why would he go and attack Amaram's men? Good point. You're making me think maybe he joined the Skybreakers. <laughs> the Skybreakers. But the Skybreakers were the justice people, right? Right, but they were a group that were still moving at that time. But it, the three groups were moving. It seems like the Skybreakers' only purpose at that time to was kill to people. kill other Radiants. Yeah. But he, all he said was, we have other things to do. Ju- and he even said, justice will get you, Father. Mm-hmm. Justice will get you. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean... I mean, that's that, not... I mean, it's... But also, his father was super corrupt, even if... Yeah, I, you're right, you're right, though. But all I'm saying is, I don't know if it's it would be the Ghost Bloods, because I feel like if... If it was the Ghost Bloods, why would the father be part of the same organization? And so this is what I this is what I was wondering. Um, and there's probably information that says I'm wrong because I don't remember some of that stuff from the first book. But uh, I was wondering if like the son went, he became part of the Ghost Bloods, and it seems kind of clear now that there's precedent that the Ghost Bloods like to loan powerful objects. They loaned his dad the Fabriel. <laughs> That's they true. Loaned That's it, true. What if they yes, loaned so him the yeah. shard plate? the shard blade to go back and get his dad to join with them. They gave him the Fabriel. He gave back the plate. And what if that armor, and what if the person that died on the battlefield wasn't even Shallan's brother? It was just the mm. plate that he was loaned. Plate and the blade, he, yeah. And he has information about the fact that she's still alive. Folks, if you have read that is past <laughs> part one, thing. you are going to laugh at us probably. <laughs> Yeah, everybody We're literally yeah. like everybody that's done this? with the book are like they're idiots. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Oh, we'll God. be arguing the same thing you're arguing next week. <laughs> that's a really interesting theory. I think so, and I like it because it's not apparent that oh, this sounds like a someone bread holds bit. a bread, <laughs> like a sword and armor, but we need it back for this guy. Give it to him, and then... Right, so I'm going to make an actual Brett Brett bet Ooh, based Brett, off of this. A Brett Brett bet. It's one that we've already done, though. Is Shallan's brother dead? <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, we already know that he's dead. I but know. we don't. That was, what my, that was what my theory Brett's just was. Brett's saying he's alive. He could potentially be alive. In the armor. Wait, so we have one they Brett bet that Manny could lose twice? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Manny could lose twice on the same bet? <laughs> <laughs> Has Manny won a bet? <laughs> yeah. 
He did actually he win did. a bet. But there um, was actually one time that he was winning a bet, and then Brett <coughs> persuaded him out of the bet, and then went the other way. And then went the other way. Oh. <laughs> I really like that theory, but I like I, it. I'm a fan of it. Interesting. I'll Thank you. you. If you make a bet, I'm gonna bet with you. Okay, oh. I'm gonna Brett bet it because I think it'll be fun. Um, Is Hellerine dead? I'm gonna say he's. I'm gonna say that the information he has on him is that he's alive, Ooh. and that he borrowed that shard blade yeah. to get the dad to join. So Ooh, yes, he's I'm not, alive. He's alive. I don't think he took the shard blade to get his dad to join, uh-huh. or for whatever, whatever purposes. Yeah. He borrowed it from them for some purpose. Yeah. Yeah, he had to. They he borrowed it, or and it then wasn't he his. Let mm-hmm. it to someone else, but the person in the armor was not him. Yeah. Someone else bought it at that time. Yeah. I'm going to say that Hellaram is dead as dead and uh, was a member of one of the other two organizations. As Ben pointed out earlier, it's probably not the Sons of Honor. So I'm leaning Gosh. towards the other organization. Pointed out. Skybreakers. Um, not me. Yeah. I think uh, I'm going to go with he is alive. Ooh. Ooh. Andrew, what do you think? Uh, I'm going to say that um, I actually really like Brett's theory as well. Uh, I'm going to join your <laughs> guys' aside. Oh, uh, yes, and no, I'm alone. <laughs> I'm alone. So here Manny. is the bet. Yeah, what's Oh, Manny. Manny. Sorry. I don't know. Do, do, <laughs> oh. do, do, do. No! Make a choice. I think Join he's dead. me. He's dead. Join? He thinks he's yes. dead. All right. <laughs> what else do you think? So we all gave another tidbit for fun. I think he is dead. Cause and what's your other tidbit? He's wound food. Like um, I say, <laughs> I think he was a part. I think he is a part of the. Ghost or blood? he was a part of the ghost bloods. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The, That's your the ghost bloods that tried to dead, kill, but a he ghost tried blood. to kill another okay. ghost blood. I say he's Amaran. dead. Amaran not, not a ghost blood. blood. Okay. So Amaran is not. Oh, a ghost never mind. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the bet, guys. Okay. If you lose, you have to go up to three people in a public place and say, "I'm your spren," and follow them for twenty seconds. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, wow. let's do it. That's the Brett bet <laughs> on Instagram. Yep. How how many how long does Instagram go? It doesn't matter. Twenty seconds is a long time. Yeah, yeah. it goes a minute. Mm-hmm. I'm your spread. <laughs> <laughs> and then and just one person. You only have to do one person. And then one every person. single time Brett gets to run up, and then Manny has to. Or someone hits him and goes, "Mine, <laughs> mine." <laughs> <laughs> why is it like Manny? Because you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose. You're gonna lose. <laughs> Fuck my life. So why am I? We're not gonna you lose, people? Manny. We could do this. So guys, <laughs> mentally I, positive. I actually, I don't want to make this a Brett bet, but I actually have another theory that I want to touch on really quick before we end it with the Shalons. Wait, does Dross have it recorded? I do. I have it in the record book. Okay. Um, record. So I have a very hail mary shot in the dark. Uh, not much information theory that I just kind of came up with. So. We'll see how it is. Does this have to do with Kaladin? This has to do with the storms. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I have, I have a theory. theory. Now that we've been introduced to this kind of like opposite storm, uh, I have a theory that one of the one of the um, so we've got the what is it called the storm front the storm the, 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 the ever storm the, the ever storm yeah and then the other one the high, the high storm the high storm so we got the high storm that is very that used to be very predictable then the ever storm came and knocked it out of out of whack kind of now they're all well they might it's be not, able to it's predict not following, it it's not following it's not following the it's um, old sink. stuff yeah. yeah so i think that the that the ever storm is actually knocking it out of cadence because it's slowing it down with each pass that they intersect and eventually it's going to stop and start pushing it the other way and start abs- mm. like, right. taking before away you continue, Stormlight. Before you continue, they actually, the, the Did they explain Storm more about Father this that I in the last book <laughs> said during the, um, what do they call it? The calm? The, um, the weeping? The, the weeping. weeping. Thank you. Uh-huh. Yeah. During the weeping, there was no, supposed to be no storms. Uh-huh. And when they were calling the high storm, the Storm Father created the one. storm. Yeah. And that's what unsynced it. So they said that um, because he yeah. created a storm yeah. when it was supposed to be that. during the weeping, to just and that storm yeah. was the storm on the shadow plains, right? Yeah, yeah right. That was, mm. and it, but that is what caused the high storm during the weeping that unsynced everything. So the weeping will now happen 
differently. Mm. Well, not just the looping, but, but we don't, the high storms. Yeah, the high storms are now on a different cadence because when he did that, he like almost restarted early. I, I must have made up a whole story in my head about that then because <laughs> I had a different understanding. No, no, you might be right about what you're saying. <laughs> what I'm you just think saying could be still true. You, okay. no, what you're saying could still be true. Yeah. What I'm saying is that the storm father said, this is what initially unsynced it. Right. But that doesn't mean... If there's something not happening. There's something right. else but not happening. Yeah, it could be that it was unsynced and then the Everstorm... It it's could now still be it slowing it down. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's no longer predictable like mm-hmm. it was before. Right. It's always going to be yeah. pushback or not pushback. And we won't know because nobody's figured out the cadence of the yeah. two storms There's only yet. been mm-hmm. like two high yeah, storms. Exactly. High storms. Since, two uh, high storms and two ever storms. Since right? uh, it got out of sync right. after the weeping. So well, the right, weeping actually, went two, extra long. Two high storms and one ever storm. The weeping was normally supposed to be like 14 days, but it went like 30 days or something. Mm-hmm. Or like 25 days. Well, it went 30 days after the random high storm yeah. in the middle of the but weeping. It was, yeah, and it was so it extended the weeping. Yeah. The weeping was a, a extraordinarily long right. and really weird. Yeah. And it was not even raining for a lot of it. Yeah. All right. Crazy. All right. So, but anyway, Let's keep going. It. That's it. Oh, okay. That's the theory. Yeah. And my the, theory. Manny has a request. My on. theory. <laughs> we don't care about your theory. Is uh, Kaladin, the whole, in, the whole time that Kaladin it. was with uh, the listeners and he was getting their perspective on things and how he thought that. How he was questioning whether it was all right to kill them, mm-hmm. and the whole perspective that he's now getting, uh, or he's now getting and talking to Syl about, like, oh, was it okay to kill them before? Like, no, it was not, or whatever, you know? Right. So I think that the things that he's going through now is probably the same things that the old, um, what are the what are they called? Knights Radiance. Yeah, the Radiance, the old Radiance understood they understood what the void bringers actually were and what they had done to them and that's why they're probably like no we're not fighting anymore but this was the only time that they ever enslaved the void bringers we don't know that no they you just made a crazy huge statement i don't know that you're saying Mm -hmm. that's why you think the radiance betrayed they didn't betray them they were just like you know what we're not gonna fight these people because they're another civilization whoa maybe but they basically enslaved all those spren to protect yeah, uh, maybe that did have stopped. to do with yeah. that. What the? They killed all their spren, though. <laughs> yeah, that's like. Well, I'm they like... killed their spren because they they stopped fighting. Because the spren have two different leaders, right? You have the Stormfather and you have Odium, and they're like each counterparts, but oh. essentially they're each using a different sort of. I mean, that's fighting. wild. So I you have like uh, the the listeners who are under Odium when they become in their war form, and then you have. Yeah. Listen, the humans, which become there's Knights there's Radiant. something you mm-hmm. got to think about though, and that we don't think about often enough. Look at the bond between Kaladin and Syl, and all of the Radiants that we know and their Spren. Mm-hmm. What did it take for the Knights Radiant to know their Spren, like their second other, mm-hmm. their best friend at the second? I mean, second other. that bond is deep, clearly. Yeah, and to betray them and murder them here's like a big that. question too though is, did they really betray that's what i'm saying i don't think they betrayed did them. they did the spren agree to it to but the, to the it. spren are like screaming all the time when they're well i don't know that's a I mean, this is, ooh, ooh, to, this is like crazy to, shit <laughs> you know what i'm saying like, like this is wrong we can't go on so break the break the pact they right. broke the bond the oath, but, that's what oh we killed them realizing what they would be but Subject to we're gonna find a lot out, but we've all we've also already heard that Spren it's kind of weird. The concept of dying is weird to Syl, like, oh, you guys actually die and it's final. Like, I wonder if though they're actually not dead, they're just kind of like enslaved until that shard is with another person that they would have binded with anyway. I wonder if Renarin's because Renarin seems very radiant like. So I wonder if his blade is actually going to return into a spren. Renarin gave well, his blade back. Did he? Already. Yeah. He uh, got his new blade. Yeah. He, so he gave yeah. the old blade back. He had but a, he has a blade. He's got, got his a, actual, he's, got he's got his actual spren he, he, blade. Uh, oh, that's right. That's he right. He got his shit. spren blade and then he's like, I can't hold this blade. It bothers me so much. And he yeah. gave it back to him and it's like... Another that theory through. because Renarin's awesome. <laughs> that spren would have loved him. <laughs> uh the one thing is i want to point out that the reason that i think um adolin will be oh god i almost thought i touched my shirt with wine um, 
Yeah, I know. You heard it here, uh, folks. I thought that um, Adolin, so he had a ritual before his duels. He used yeah. to like just talk to his blade all the time. Mm-hmm. And they're always like, they're dead, Spren. They're dead, Spren. I don't know what it. I think it is, but I think Adolin has just got to, he like loves that freaking shard blade so much. Mm-hmm. He talks to it before everything. He's He like loves him so much. Even Pattern like likes him. Mm-hmm. I just wonder if he could just wake that fucker Spread up. up. Yeah, That's what I, was I think too. he's gonna do something because Kaladin basically did that. Like he bonded a chill, and then he broke that bond, and she was like in the same state. And he just woke it. Woke and then he's like went through his transformation, transformation of his own beliefs, and like this is what I have to do, and he woke that back up. Yeah, like, I just I wonder think that they like, can wake what, him back. What up. if? What if he can? I don't know, make the, like, renew the same oaths. Mm-hmm. Cause he it would have to be to a blade like, or a spren that is compatible with him. Exactly. Right. Yeah. It'd have to be so random. That's what I said. I, I, know, I know it's a long <laughs> shot. I just, like, I just, the way that he was just, like, he would, like, before his duels, he's like, I always talk to my blade. Like, he's, like, talking to his blade. And yeah. then yeah. when I was like, did you have chicken? And he's like, yeah. He's, like, in the middle of talking to his blade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. And, and, then, the and then he was... For sure. Yeah, and yeah. then he yeah, exactly, and then he remembers too. Like when Shalon, he's like, "Ah, I've never seen a new shard blade." This is he was so pumped about the the new pattern shard blade pattern being a shard, which is why pattern liked him so yeah. much. Yeah, <laughs> and I, I really, am. I'm wondering. I'm, I just wonder if maybe he could, you know. That's weird though, because usually he could fuck pattern pattern? lies. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> wow. wow, his motion. He's like, well, I wonder. <laughs> I didn't do that. <laughs> we I did this. We <laughs> have <it> oh. <laughs> Jesus. But anyway, uh, all right. Let's move on. We're running out of time. We are actually. We gotta f- finish this up real quick. So, Shalon and the Night Mother, Ooh. which is different than the Night Watcher. 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 Who gives is the old magic, but is also part of the same. Uh, like family of these crazy spren, mm-hmm. yeah. Which mm-hmm. also the uh, Terravangians. Watch a, also that one big spren out on the ocean that pops up. I'm assuming Terravangian. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that random Terravangian yeah. also said the spren that causes the thrill in the second book mm-hmm. was yeah. part of them, and there's a few more. Um, but are these all? Are they all fragments of odium, or are they? No, all, no. I think they're all fragments Night of Mother, either odium or, or honor. Honor, because Nightmother is a fragment of odium. They said yes. That. Nightmother is a fragment of odium. But yeah. the yeah. Stormfather is a fragment of honor, honor. and he said yeah. that also. Now the Night Watcher probably is a fragment of odium, but we don't know for fact mm. yet. And then the thrill seems like odium. it's a fragment of odium. I'm assuming Night Watcher is actually honor. It might be. Oh, it could be. It's just like because it's Anna is not gonna be like. Oh, I'm gonna just give you this. Like you need to. It's a trade. You need to it's want it. It's a trade. It, yeah. And I'm gonna give you something else that you don't want. Mm-hmm. But the night mother, who Ooh. in my opinion was causing the dogs in the uh, Dalinar vision, mm-hmm. uh, yep, is is interesting. And clearly, what was making Shalon? Why does Shalon? Why do you guys think Shalon has like a? Like a, a sense or a connection I think, to yeah they I wonder Patterns because odium. pattern is Pattern. Odium. <laughs> no, I think what the the really big connection there is that um, Shalan is so um, engulfed in this like personal struggle of um, not knowing who she is and having to put on these fake faces and one thing that I think is really interesting is that's such a it she seems to have such a connection to this like parallels with the night mother who is this almost broken being that is trying to understand humans and sending out these like these shells to try and copy people whereas a lot of what um shalan does is veil is a copy of uh what's her name the the tin. woman in the tin, tin. tin. and then veil radiant is, better is than tin. A, yeah but they're they're <laughs> formed after these people mm. like radiant is a form of uh yasna kind yeah. of like how would yasna deal with this like and i think that's that same uh connection they have like similar parallels can i add on to that because i think it might have something to do with pattern the type of spren right the type of spren that pattern in it, everybody calls them lie spren 
but they call them themselves truth spring. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that maybe Shallan could sense the true nature of things Mm -hmm. more than with pattern. So like the true nature of Urethiru is that she sensed something the lie in Urethiru, which was the night mother. Mm -hmm. Like just she did. Like she felt it. But <coughs> I am there felt it there. too. Yes, but not all of Adians felt it. Not all Just, of them did. De- like you said, Delinar did not. Mm-hmm. Delinar, but no clue. Uh, Maze, Maze, Maze felt it. He's like, get to the bottom of this. Well, we don't know if he felt it or he was told about the feeling. Or That's true. He, he knew of its. He presence. knew of its presence. He knew, but he the knew of its presence. So of someone feeling. else also felt it. Yeah. yeah, which could mean there's another light weaver. Or mm. another radiant. That well, we we, I think there's definitely another radiant in Dude, the blood. Holy um, shit! We didn't even talk about the dustbringer. Yeah, but first, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think there's definitely a radiant in the ghost blood because Marais, when he met with Shalon, he's like, "Oh, just because you're a radiant doesn't mean you can't be a part of us. You'll like, we'll show you how." You good point. Right? Ooh, that's um, a good point. But I think the whole thing that Shalon was able to relate to this being is. She says that at, she thinks at some point it might have been just a regular human mm. that got turned dark or something happened yeah. and it mm. lost its uh, humanism it's way humanity, or, what it, or humanity and then it starts to look at humans and act like them to try to understand them. Mm-hmm. And I think Shalon has the same thing with her light weaving. She tries, she's trying to fit into the society that she's a part of. Yeah. So she keeps on making different characters that she thinks fit because mm-hmm. she doesn't think that her actual own self fits. So well, she you, killed her own mother. Do you think then that there's kind of like a uh, a string theory thing going on here where like everything's made up actually of the same things? Like we, like yeah. the humans are Spren and everything's basically just a different form of Spren? No. It could be. I think that the... I mean, Kaladin's mom says everything, ha- everything so, is Spren. Mm-hmm. Um, Sanderson is a very science-based kind of guy mm-hmm. and he bases all of That's his stories and magic on science but i don't i think that spren is a physical force that he does and i could be wrong but i did read the um interlude to the um edge dancer but it, as part of his um cosmere. Uh, cosmere and he says like the cosmere is bigger than all of the stories in it mm-hmm. which is why we got characters like hoid mm-hmm and you know, like all these other things, which but we still haven't seen Wit. We haven't seen Wit lately. I know. Yeah. I think he might but, be with Yasna. Oh, oh, speaking of Yasna, that's how we'll finish it anyway. Yes. But um, I gotta say, Shalon takes this thing out by touching it and winning it with will. Sorry, guys. Sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah, she kind of like. I think the she. She's able to like kind of go toe to toe, but like kind of touch it, touch it, and that scared the being because at one point it remembered, and she knew this because they could see each other. A light it remembered that it. a light reaver had at one point trapped it, and it was afraid of. So that. interesting now is the way that Shalon described it is the night mother knows all of Shalon's weaknesses, and Shalon knows all of the night mother's weaknesses. Yeah. So what's gonna come to Shalon at it. some point? She didn't yeah. beat it. Her mother. But she, she kind of. Um, she made it aware that she could beat her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she has been beaten before, so does not want to experience that. She so went away, mm-hmm. man. She's hiding yeah. in a nook, I guess. But is yeah. she going to come back at Shalon with her mother or yeah. some images? Like, um, uh, I think it's suppressed for now. Yeah. I don't think I it's think gonna... it's setting up for later. Those yeah. two are going to battle today. I think it's going to get enhanced <laughs> oh. by Odium later. Uh, like a... Become more uh, powerful. Clearly yeah. it was part of the Desolations. Yeah. So, but I mean, that was clear based on the vision. Something so. happens to weaken Chalan or enhance the Night Mother. Yeah. Uh, nothing's going to happen. Clearly, they must have trapped it. Because why yeah. Why would it be at your Ethereum if it wasn't literally in a cage? Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? That's well, they, but it broke. They said that it broke out a long time ago. Right. Well, so it was well, just part like of just there, years ago, chilling around. Once there was no more radiance. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. We should probably wrap up we're done with part one except for the fact that they At the they end. tricked us out they tricked us out because they're like oh yeah i know the bridge boy returned but it was yasna <laughs> yeah the main bitch <laughs> yay as it He's turns back. out manny's cosplay is still alive <laughs> and what i like about that 
is the first thing Yasna does when she comes back is visit Shalan. Yeah. And like it just shows I think that they're actually friends, it wasn't just yeah. being manipulative. It's gonna be interesting because when Yesna left Shalan she was nothing like she is now. Nothing yeah. like she is now. Also, oh. nobody knew about all these powers. Everything was still hidden. And now well, she's going to come I back and be like, yes, no, oh, there's no secret. Yes. <laughs> I think she did. Yes, they knew more than most. And she didn't let us know. No, no, yeah, Yesna knew. But she didn't one have of, confirmed. But one of their, one of their like, things like, that <laughs> binded them was the fact that Shalon knew this secret about her that she could then tell her. It's like, well, it doesn't need to be yeah, a secret anymore. Yeah. What I'm saying is, I think mean, Yesna yeah. was even further because when she came back at the end of the last book, she came out of Spren City, literally. <laughs> she's like, I had to go get some answers. Yeah, and she's like, she clearly already knew a lot of shit. Yeah, so, now she's yeah. gonna know even more. So I think um, that. I can't wait to read the next part. It's Ooh. in the very next chapter after uh, yeah. the interlude. Oh, Hopefully Yasna yeah. can smack no. Shalon's mind. Next week, guys, <laughs> is going to be a fun time. week. Hopefully yeah. Yasna can yeah. smack Shalon's mind back into uh, in reality. reality. In reality, yeah. yeah. I really think it will help Shalon a lot. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, all That's right, so folks. Good stuff. Uh, we are a little over on part two, but we went a little short on part one, so it evens out. Yes. So um, we'll do round table real quick. <laughs> Any last comments? No, I'm good. We we discussed Captain? this pretty thoroughly. Yeah, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. In Feel the good. dream? I'm good. He's good now that Yesna's alive? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm good until man. next time. Man. All right. Hit man. Mm-hmm. Jerry, I'm good? I'm yeah, Brett, Jeremy. the director, and I am good. All right. Uh, the demon's also good. Just remember that jam costs 100 emerald bronze. Yes. And the bread is? And with that, I will leave you <laughs> to die for. <laughs> I will leave you. I will leave you. Again, like it. L-Y-K-E-T dot net. Lit Literature 1 on all the media. Yes. blah de blah Cheers. 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 Oh, no, we're doing it. Bye. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of Lit Literature. If you liked us, please check out our social media at uh, Lit Literature 1 at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and don't hesitate to join in on the conversation. Uh, we appreciate the conversation, the questions, uh, book uh, recommendations, anything of that sort, um, join in right on the social media websites. And uh, don't forget to check us out at our website, litliterature.com, and our upcoming projects, though there aren't many now besides Lit Literature, uh, you can find at likeit.net, L-Y-K-E-T. Um, we do have a Patreon account, but if you truly want to support us, please like and share. Um, cheers.